Hello guys, got a video here for you today on the AGT Euro again too, and in this one what we're going to be doing is making a reg tester for the rifle. This is going to be a standalone unit, so we take the regulator out the rifle, test it in our little reg tester, and we can set the reg to whatever we want. I'm doing this for two reasons. Firstly, to see what the reg is actually set to. We have disassembled it from the factory, but I did put it all back to the factory settings that we took as we disassembled the rifle. And secondly, we'll be able to see if the rig's got any creep on it, and generally see how well the rig's working, what the sort of recovery time and all that sort of thing is. So it's going to be a useful little tool. With that said, we've got some material chucked up in the three jaw, and we're just starting work on it. First thing to do, as always, is to face and then turn the OD of the material. The OD of this is going to turn out to around 31.5 mil. The regulator itself is only 19mm in diameter, so we're going to have nice thick walls there, and nothing should be able to blow up on us. Once we've got the OD established, we can drill out the centre. There's going to be a few steps to this. So first thing we're doing is coming with a 13.5mm drill bit, just drilling out some of the bulk material. We will have to bore this out to a larger diameter at a later stage, but for now we're just removing some of the waste material. After that's done, we're coming through with a smaller diameter drill bit and just removing some more waste material. This will be where the spigot of the regulator goes, so the part that houses the reg adjuster. And we're taking this out to around 90mm deep. That's going to be the overall length of this part of the unit. Next up, we can start boring the internal to the correct diameter. We're boring this out to 19mm and we're boring that to 45mm deep. That will give a shoulder for the reg body to sit up against. And there you see the reg being test fit in the unit. Once that's done, we can start boring out the very end of the unit for some threads. There's going to be a cap that goes on here and captures the reg inside. And this is obviously going to be the low pressure side. The threads that we're going to be putting in are M22 by 1. And we're boring out the end to 20.9 mil. These are obviously going to be female threads. When doing metric threads to find the minor diameter that you need to bore to, you just simply minus the pitch from the nominal thread size. In our case, 22mm by 1mm pitch. So you take 1 away from 22 and you get 21. You always add a little bit of extra for a bit of clearance. So 20.9mm, that's plenty. The threads themselves are going to be about 14mm deep. And obviously, as it's an internal thread up to a shoulder, we're going to be putting a undercut so that the threads end cleanly. But when that's all said and done, we can part the piece off and then start work on the other side. What we've got to do to this side is face it to get the face clean, put a nice 45 on the very edge, and then I'm going to be putting some knurling on this end just to make it a little easier to grip as we screw the end cap in and out. Once that's done, the final thing we've got to do is put an M10 by one thread in the very end, and that'll be to fit a little foster fit in. With that done, that's it for this piece. We can start work on the end cap. And again, first thing to do is to face the end and then turn it down to 31.5mm. After that, we can turn down the very end for our threads. This will be the unit that screws into the base of the part we just made. So we've got to turn this down to 22mm to put our threads on. And like with the other part we made, we're making an undercut for the threads so that they end nice and cleanly. We're also finishing up the shoulder in this operation. Once that's done, we can turn a little bit of the waste material down. There is going to be an O-ring on this end to stop reg pressure from leaking out th through the threads. And this will seal on the same bore as the regulator. Next up, we can put the thread on. So as you see, the thread's going on nicely. It's a fairly fine pitch, but the thread's long enough to be nice and strong. And it's definitely not going to blow out under pressure. Once the threads have been established, we can test fit the other part and make sure it's fitting on nicely. This one's fitted, and once we're happy, we can just polish the threads up with some Scotch Brite. Up next, we're going to be cutting a O ring groove on the very end of the unit. The O ring that we're going to be using is a 14 by 2, and we're going to be cutting the O ring groove a little shy just to protrude it out a little. A 14 by 2 O-ring, his maximum OD is 18 millimeters, obviously, and we've got a seal in a 19 mil bore. So we're cutting the O-ring groove a little shy, measuring across the O-ring and seeing what we've got. Doing it this way, you can adjust the fit of the O-ring. So I think the measurement we took here was around 19.4 mil. 
So I took the O-ring groove down another 0.2mm and that got us the squeeze that we wanted on the O-ring. Next up, as we want to screw a gauge onto this end, we've got to thread the unit. So we're drilling out the unit 8.6mm, then we're tapping it. And the reason we're doing that is that once this unit's finished, we won't have any nice surfaces to grip onto using the 3 jaw. We definitely don't want to be gripping onto the threads that we just cut and the large diameter there that you see will be knurled and we don't want to mess up our knurl in the three jaw we can finish the unit off by knurling it finishing the ends with a 45 and then parting the piece off with that done the last thing to do is just to flip it around in the three jaw face the end and then put a little countersink in the end of the threads we can now take that part over to the mill and finish it off so to finish the part off, we've got to put a little bleed screw in it and this will allow us to simulate taking a shot with a rifle and to dump the air behind the regulator. So to do that, we're going to be milling a little flat on it using a 8mm end mill, then drilling through into the bore we established earlier using a 2mm drill bit and then drilling and tapping M4 for a little grub screw. We don't do this all the way through the unit. We want to leave a sort of spacer ring 3mm thick between the bore we cut earlier and the bottom of the M4 threads. We're going to be using a ball bearing as a sealing device. But that's that. It's all done. I'll bring you over to the bench and we'll show you exactly how it works. And here's all the components, all cleaned, ready to be tested. We've got all the components installed. We've got our ball bearing and our grub screw in the little hole here. This is our pressure relief valve and we're going to use it to simulate taking a shot with a rifle. We've got our o-ring on the end here that obviously seals on the inside where the regulator goes in that bore there. We've got our atmospheric breath hole in the side of the reg tester there which corresponds with the hole in the side of the regulator itself. So the regulator is somewhere about there in the tester and obviously we've got our gauge at the end here. This is a Keller Eco 2 gauge. Some people ask me that when we've been doing the videos. It's an Eco 2. It's a fairly expensive gauge. If you wanted to have a cheaper version of this, you could either buy the generic pressure gauge or use one of the small digital gauges that I've reviewed on the channel before. Those gauges that we tested were within about a bar of this one, but I've got this one, so I'm going to be using this one. So we'll put the reg in the reg tester and see what happens. Just put use a screw in the back of the regulator just to make it a little easier to handle. Push that in the back there. I did put a small amount of silicon grease on the O-rings before we started just to save a little time. Screw the two halves together like so. And then we'll hook up our pressure to this side here. So with the pressure connected you can see the regulator pressure up there building up. We've got about 91 bar at the moment, and that's what the regulator from the factory had written on the side. We obviously disassembled the rifle, so I did put it back to the measurement we took as we disassembled it. And I did also line up the little alignment marks I made myself, so we can say that we're roughly aware the factory set the regulator. It does seem to have a small amount of creep on it. That's fairly normal for regulators, if I'm honest. When you look at them with the higher precision gauges, they do tick up every now and again. This one seems to have about a one or two bar of creep to it. It sort of rises up to about 93, then stops. But if we simulate taking a shot, we see that the regulator springs back nice and quickly and then slowly rises in pressure. We may try and fix that at a later date to fix that or to fix that in most regulators it's a poor seal between the top of the piston and the adjuster screw itself by polishing up those two surfaces the creep normally gets a lot better although in saying that one to two bar isn't that bad at all so now that we know what our regulator is set to what i'll do now is i'll take it out and i'll show you the adjustments right then so you see the regulator here we have our mark on it, that's where the regulator is set at the moment. 
but for every quarter of a turn of adjustment you do to the adjuster screw, in my experiments, quarter of a turn of adjustment equals roughly 33 bar of reg pressure change. So if you undid the adjuster screw quarter of a turn, you would rise the reg pressure 33 bar. And if you did it in, you would lower it roughly 33 bar. If we take the clock face analogy, one minute of adjustment would equal around two bar. So if we did the adjuster screw in 15 minutes or quarter of a turn, that would lower the reg pressure by around 30, 33 bar. The reason I say 33 and not just 30 is that on average, my adjustments were slightly over the two bar increment. However, that may just be my regulator. It does depend on your Belleville stack and how many Belleville washers you have in your regulator. So this one is obviously a sub 12 regulator and the FAC models may have a different Belleville stack in them. I'm not sure, I haven't seen one. But for this rig at least, that was my findings. That's gonna about do it for this one guys. So thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.